Hi guys, I hope you're all okay. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today for another video. This is a bit of a revisit to the Yaesu UV8DR. Now, this radio is sold by many different brands and I should point out I have used radios by Zastone in the past and they've always been okay. So I'm thinking this has probably just been rebadged. It is, it is released and produced under many different names, under many different companies, but it's branded as a submersible radio, the UV8DR. It, it usually has some sort of variant of UV8DR. And as I said, it is a clone or a lookalike of the ASU radio. It doesn't perform as well as the ASU radio and uh, the software inside is completely different to the ASU radio, but um, it does look at a glance very similar to the ASU version. So I picked this radio up last year, did some testing, it failed miserably and I ended up getting a refund on this radio. So the test I did was a couple of range tests, so those who watch this channel may remember those videos. If not, I'll put some clips on here and I'll put some links in the description below. Did a range test with it, didn't perform too well really, at quite short range, wasn't impressed with it at all. And from the comments on the other videos, uh, and I should point out there's been a lot of comments lately on the other videos, so that's why I've done a bit of a revisit on this. Um, in the comments on the other videos, a lot of people said the antenna is basically just a dummy load, it's it's rubbish, doesn't work properly. So um, that's that's one thing that, that wasn't great about it. And then the second test, we I had to do the submersible test. I couldn't I couldn't not couldn't resist the temptation. And the submersible test failed miserably as well. Um, it seemed to go okay for a minute or two, and then it just let water in and broke the radio. Nothing would work. Um, all weird lights were coming on and off and buttons weren't working, settings weren't working, it was freezing, things like that. Obviously water damage, that's to be expected when something lets water in like that. So I let the radio dry out for a day or two and it still wasn't right and that was probably because I didn't let it dry out long enough. So I decided to freeze it, I put it in a block of ice for another video and I forgot about it and it stayed in my freezer for about four months. And in the summer I decided to get the radio out for another video that I did and, and defrost it and see if it would work and obviously it didn't work I didn't even bother to power it on so because I can't let anything go I decided to keep the radio and it's been sat in the shack and when I moved everything into the new shack I decided to just give the battery a charge and when I turn the radio on everything works it all works absolutely fine all the buttons press, it transmits, it doesn't freeze, all the menus work, everything. And that's because it's been allowed to dry out for the best part of, of six or seven months. Uh, yeah, six or seven months since I defrosted it. So it's been allowed to, to dry out. Um, so I thought, well, I'll start using it. I'll put a different antenna and start using it. But I noticed inside, behind the screen, there was some dirt and corrosion. And that's uh, consistent with water damage. So you can see here, I've opened the radio up and all over the, the board and where the screws are there, there's quite a lot of corrosion. So up the top near the antenna um, port, there's some corrosion there. On the left hand side, you can see some corrosion where the PTT um, solder points are. You can see corrosion under the on off button. You can see corrosion on the keypads and there's all these screws that are corroded as well. And this isn't going to help the radio. Um, so I thought, well, we might as well bring it back to life and, and, and use it. So I'm not going to take these screws out because it's hard to get the board off. It's it's soldered with various different components, um, which locks it to the board. The screws are there just to hold it in place. So I'm not going to take that off because I don't want to damage the radio any further. And, you know, there may be a bit of corrosion underneath, but the main business of the radio is on is on this side. Um, there won't be much on the other side of the board uh, other than where these, sol these components are soldered and... The uh, most of the corrosion is, is surface damage, so I'm not going to take that off. You can see there's a couple of tuning pots there as well. I'm wondering if any, any experts out there, there's one on the left and one in the middle there. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming one of them is probably for the VFO, the other one is for power, but we're not going to tweak those, we'll just leave them as they are. So yeah, you can see corrosion all over this board. What I'm going to do is just use some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud, and if you're uh, an American viewer, a Q-tip. And I'm going to clean just the corrosion off this board, clean the rust off, and um, bring this radio back to its former uh, glory, if I can say that. You can see underneath there on the chassis of the radio, there's quite a lot of corrosion. We're going to clean that off as well. Um, that's probably permanent damage, but here's the reason why the radio isn't actually watertight. You can see the rubber gasket there. It doesn't fit properly into the track in the chassis that's that's been made for it. It's just awful. Um, the, if they had done a decent job on this gasket, it probably would have survived the water test because the battery um, contacts on the back are, are sealed completely. 
the, the speaker microphone is sealed so if they had done a decent job on that um, it probably would have worked but you can see there it's uh, not a great job at all and there's where the microphone um, protection is so yeah it's a mess really but we will clean it up like I said I'm assuming some of that corrosion is going to be uh, permanent there but we'll just clean it so there's no loose particles and we'll take that gasket off I may end up just using this central piece here because I'm not going to be dunking the radio in water again anyway so it, it's not really um, a necessity I need to be careful not to pull these speaker wires off as well um, you can see all this corrosion we're going to start with that first um, on these screws so I'm just going to put a small amount of isopropyl alcohol on there and that'll just clean off some of the uh, crap and corrosion there a lot of it's rust from the screws really um, there's, there's some other bits and pieces but a lot of it is rust from these screws it's quite stubborn I, I could soak the screws in vinegar or something like that but I'm not going to put that one's loose so what we'll do is we'll just give that a little bit of a tighten up but we'll take it out actually um, and just clean underneath you can see the brass um, the brass pad there is uh, is not corroded so that, that should be okay but we'll just give that a clean there's quite a lot of dirt coming off on the cotton bud there and we'll just uh, drop that screw back into place. And while we're here, we'll tighten these as well. I'm just going to go around and tighten. I'm just going to clean the rest of the circuit board while we're at it. One thing I noticed when I switched it back on, some of these buttons weren't working due to water damage. So we'll just give them a good clean and make sure that they're free from corrosion so there's a good clean contact between the button and the um, metal pad there and then just moving on to the side where that uh, the chassis is corroded it's probably a zinc alloy or something like that I'm not sure what it's made of so it is quite corroded but that'll just clean off okay and as I said at the start of the video you can see the screen there has got some dirt behind it that's just um, ox like oxidation from the screws inside so I'm going to clean the um, inside and outside screen but not with isopropyl alcohol I'm just going to clean that with a bit of water because um, I don't want the isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol to tarnish the plastic on the screen otherwise the radio will just be ruined and then just the LCD screen cover itself and then finally just inside the plastic casing you can see there's just some residue from the corrosion on the um, main chassis of the radio so we'll just give that a bit of a clean out and just blow blow the remaining dust particles out of there and that's mainly just to stop it from getting back into the screen and you can see the um, seal around the microphone there there's a small rubber gasket which presses up against the body of the radio and just protects the microphone element there from water but I'm still thinking water would get through into the main part of the microphone but microphone scene is unaffected by the water damage anyway as I say this radio is working perfectly so what we'll do now is we'll just put it all back together so I'm not going to use the rest of this gasket it actually snapped anyway and it, it's useless the radio isn't submersible and I'm not going to be putting it in water so we're just going to use the cover for the speaker mic port and then we'll uh, we'll close the radio up so these springs here they th th those buttons are set away from the keypad so those springs just help the buttons connect with the keypad there um, I thought I'd lost them when I was opening the radio up but they stuck to the magnet in the speaker on the front so luckily I didn't lose them so they just pop into place and then the rest of the radio body can just sit over it And just a quick fit test there to make sure the button's all pressed before I screw the circuit board down to the chassis. So I'll just screw those screws down to the um, body of the radio now and that'll just hold everything in place. Next thing to go on is the rubber cover which protects the data port. Now I don't know what this data port actually does, I don't think it does anything. It says it's a speaker mic port and a data port but you program this through the Kenwood plug on the side. And then we've got a little brass ring there which um, actually goes around the volume control knob and just screws into place I'll tighten this up afterwards I'm just going to put this um, thumb tight for now the dummy load antenna just screws back on the top and then the volume control button just clicks into place on that brass pin there 
and that's it everything's assembled so the next thing to do is just to grab the battery we'll put that into place on the back of the radio and we'll power it on and see if we damaged anything there you go so as you can see it all worked perfectly we'll um, just open up a couple of repeaters and see if it uh, works And that's opening a couple of repeaters there, so it's working absolutely fine. So I'm quite glad I managed to get this radio working again. Um, as I say, maybe the first tests weren't too fair. I think it's only right that we try it with another antenna further down the line and see how it performs. Um, a lot of people are saying that this is like a dummy load, the antenna there. It's, it's not very good at all. So we'll put something else on it and we'll maybe see how it performs at a later date. But yeah, it's another radio back into the collection that's working. And uh, now that corrosion shouldn't get any worse. Now there's no damp in there. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this quick video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions or questions, or if you've got one of these radios and found it doesn't work as well, then let me know in the box below and I'll get back to you. And if you haven't already subscribed, then make sure you hit the subscribe button. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. 7-3 for now.